Welcome to the Game Rage Music Show. buddy would you look at that it's time for an all new wait let me adjust my shit it's time for an all new extra special episode of all gas no trash this will be episode number 29 oh shit number 29 dude number a we have exceeded we we have exceeded the uh the pedestrian numbers of podcasting. Uh, oh, absolutely. What, what is the number, by the way? Is it 10? 10. A ten well, no, I, I think it's it. the number was something ridiculous, like like 50% or 60% of all podcasts ever made never make it past 10 episodes. Ever, so, made, ever made it. Ever made it. We are about to triple that with just this one podcast. Now, overall, I mean, we have like made probably over 150 episodes at this point with all our shit combined but i wonder what the total amount of time is as far as this uh podcast I, i'm dude i wonder how much better we've gotten like listening to episode one to now if we've improved at all i would i would hope so <laughs> i mean i i, I, I would, think uh, i think the likes have probably gone down they're still there last week they were they were yeah they were on the higher side because yeah, yeah. i was trying to figure out what i was trying to say with the Royal Otis album, which you guys can listen to or stream now on pretty much any streaming platform, also on RSS.com if you haven't already done so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that album was uh, that was something. It was it was something. It was something else. I you know where I stand on it. I don't think my opinions changed. I I sat with it pretty much the entire week, and I just still I might actually give it a lower score. Now it might it might sit to, at a six or a five point five. To be honest with you, I I went back and I listened to it again this week. You did, yeah, because I was just you know I I just kind of thought maybe I'm being an asshole, maybe I'm just being too critical, maybe I'm just being too harsh. So I said, you know what, I've sat on it for a day or two. Let me go back and let me just listen to it again. So I did it this week on my way to work. I just blasted it through the whole album one day, uh, or on my way home in the morning one day, and I just said, you know what. I like this even less now. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> and, and not that I really just to say I liked it at all, but it, it's I feel the same. I think it might my score might drop down. If I were to, we were to do it again today, I might, might revise. Six. It'd be like a six or maybe like a five point eight. I feel like it's probably the wheelhouse, like a good fifty eight percent. And in spite of what we say, uh, I think on the Australian charts, it's sitting at number one as far as albums go. And I think releases because uh, I saw. I saw an hour in his management, their Instagram, they were uh-huh. raving about how their their artists, Royal Otis. Do is, you do you think that some of those are kind of horseshit? Yeah. Do you think they're bullshit? Because a little bit, a little bit, because I dude, I, I can't be we can't be fucking delusional and thinking that this album was above and beyond everything else that has been released up until this point in 2024. They're a great band. They had a few good songs, but yeah. It, the album its entirety i i don't believe it is is it the album itself or is it just like a single that's what is on the top of the charts or is it the whole album i think it's the whole it's the whole album so well it's in australia right yeah it's it's called i think it's called the aria charts okay the aria is like with the equivalent of like the i think the like the billboard here uh, let's see the billboard let, let me, top 100 let me, let me look this up real quickly so i'm not being i'm not gonna be mistaken so you're not just making shit up you know because that could happen. Oh, by the way, if you forgot, I'm Josh and he's Adam. We forgot. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Christ, if you don't know by now, but for those of us who are new, for those of you, I should say that are new. Yeah, I'm Josh. He's Adam. So thank you for tuning in. If you are a new listener while Adam's looking up to find out to make sure we're not full of shit about the name. <laughs> but yeah, going back to the album, though, I, I mean, I could understand if they were if it was like a song, if it was a singular song that was picked hand picked off the album to be the single and I mean, because I did, I did like a couple of those songs. Yeah, Foam was the right for me. Foam was the standout. Okay, top ten albums, Aria charts, Aria charts. So that is might, that the current. What's the current one? Is, is are they at number one? Top currently? ten Aussie albums, 
Pratt's and Payne, Royal Otis, number one. Number one. Do they, what's the metric? Sales? Or is it? I couldn't tell you. I don't uh, know if it's streams. Because I think Billboard is that. It's, isn't it based it's on plays. sales or it's plays? plays? It's plays on radio, I think. And I, uh, it might, it, I'm not sure if it's different medias too, like television mm. and shit. If it counts for plays in that regard as well. That'd be um, interesting. I can't, I couldn't tell you, but at the very least, we know for sure on the Aria charts. It's number one. It's number one on top 10 Aussie albums. That's just local to Australia itself. The continent slash country. It, it could also be that, I mean, obviously people in Australia have a different taste in music than we do and a different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A different set of standards, I should say. So maybe they don't view this album as being a lower scored album such as we gave it. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they're somewhat partial because they're from Australia. So naturally, they're going to give their <clears throat> hometown. Right. Well, but heroes. it's only Australian artists, though. Isn't that what? Yeah, but on. on OK, so on the Aria charts, top 10 albums. OK. Taylor Swift is number one. Royal Otis is at 10. So overall. Okay, so they're overall. Are well, they So there's there's multiple categories. There's oh, so they're number Aussie, 1 in what? Just Aussie Aussie oh. albums. Okay. Top 10 albums in general, which Taylor is, Swift is okay. number 1. And they're number 10 though. They're number 10. So they're still on the list. Yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah, so personally, I wouldn't even think that would have made a list. Yeah. Uh just kind of a surprise. But then again, like I couldn't tell you what in the entire landscape of the uh, Australian music scape. Yeah. Are they really the best? And are they really one of the top 10? I, I don't I, know. I don't yeah. have enough time to find out. That's true. I, I guess. I guess what we would have to do is we'd have to look at the rest of the list and we would have to listen to maybe that's an episode. Maybe we listen to an assortment of albums. Maybe that's a four hour episode where we listen to the whole top 10 that's right now. Yeah. Just to see if we agree. Cause maybe they are the best thing that they're out. I mean, even though by our standard or by how we rated it, it was fairly, you know, middle of the road. Maybe that's the shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's the top tier stuff. All the other stuff is even worse. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think Australia has, and they have other radio stations be, Besides Triple J and stuff like that, that well, I mean, just like yeah, we do here, right? Yeah, we have here, right? But they're kind of, they're kind of weird. They they don't <laughs> have their naming system is multiple copies of the same letter, so it's like Triple double J. Oh, I, there might be even there might even be a single J. There's Triple J. There's Double J. There's Double R. I don't know what the other ones are, but. I think we got a little bit more practical naming sense, you know, KCRW, K rock, you know, KFI. Well, it's the, uh, it's the call. Well, there's cause there's a K in front of everything. Cause it's like their radio call sign or whatever that they're given. That's what, it, that's what it is. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, I guess, yeah, ours is, is better than that. It's just not the same letter over and over, but you know, I mean that, that is walking a dangerous line by being double, double J because you know, Double J Jeff Jarrett may be coming around with uh, gimmick, J, infri gimmick infringement and be uh, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett. crawling up their ass. I mean, he would have a very valid case. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, rather interesting to see that this album is performing well. Uh, I, I think hey. I think for a lot of people, like the, the demographic that this is targeted towards 18, possibly to f it's what they want. It, it's exactly what you would want. But yeah. for us, maybe because we're out of. Older I, I don't know. demographic, I don't, maybe. I think we're still in it, but we're probably in the back end of it. What is it? 18, isn't it 18 to 35? 18 to 35, or maybe 18 to 49. Oh, maybe it is 18 to 49. Yeah. Well, okay. We're not at the back end of it. Oh, then we're, I mean, in, the we're in the middle. We're, yeah, we're, we're in the middle. squarely in the middle. Yeah, so. Now, if it's 18 to 35, I'm, I'm not even in it anymore. I'm on 36, so. Yeah, but I mean, shit. I think we're on top of what's, what's hip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's, well. You are on the bleeding edge. And yeah. I mean, again, you have expanded my music tastes or repertoire, I guess, for lack of a better term, and introduced me to things. And you've uh, you've refined my palate, I guess, as as you could say, because beforehand I was just a normie. I mean, I still kind of am just, you know, a normie 
fucking yeah. music guy, but. I think I've also opened my mind to other things because, I mean, shit, there's things that you showed me that I wasn't really all that. Uh, I was largely oblivious to Mongolian throat music. Oh, yeah, man. That's a good one. Or Viking. Metal. Or hi- I mean, yeah. I mean, this isn't relevant. I mean, this isn't specifically within this podcast that you show me Viking metal because that was something that you were listening to. <coughs> yeah, forever. Forever. Like you you loved Amon Amarth or I don't, oh, yeah. I don't know what other shit you. Oh, man, I can't wait till they come out with a new album and we can review it. That's. <laughs> It's going to be fucking sweet. Uh, but there has, I mean, shit, what was that one electronic band with the three guys? I don't know if they had bowl cuts, but. Oh, yeah. Um, God damn it. Oh, let me look it up because like I, I got to I got to know. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways. Um, yeah, I, I think I mean, because. I think sometimes I get too. Too involved in my own head, or too I'm too close minded to to consider what other people have to say about music. Yeah, it was Electric Callboy. Electric Callboy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, that was some I'm cool gonna, shit that I just found scrolling on fucking Instagram or whatever. Like I, I'm, I'm not, I don't a hundred percent know about everything. So it's it's nice when I get a surprise that something I didn't see coming or something yeah. I didn't think I I and, would enjoy. And that's and everything that I have recommended to you. I thought you were going to hate. I th- I thought, oh man. And that's part of the reason why I picked those things was because I just wanted to hear you tear it apart and why it's terrible and why the things that I like are bad. But I enjoyed them and oh cool, man. Objectively it is it, it, it's decent. It's good. So it's good to know that I wasn't just, you know. I also need to tur- tur- I need to turn my mind off to certain pre preconceived notions perhaps. Pre pre disposed opinions i have about fantasy fantasy in the, in the regard of lord of the rings or things like that because there okay. are there is metal genres that are in the fantasy oh yeah there that that, that is are, true i i don't even i think it was on pigeons and planes or pitchfork there was a I, I i might be wrong but there's a dwarven band oh yeah a dwarven metal band like yeah. rosewind or something yep. oh yeah they're great i love them so there's the guys <laughs> like you know I don't know how tall he is, but he's in full regalia. Oh yeah, full dwarf, dwarf war war culture regalia. And I, I think part of me, I just can't suspend my disbelief for that to, for people to play that role. Yeah, because it's it's not real, and I don't want to believe it. But that's part of the show, man. But it it should be fun because yeah, it. I mean, music, music can't just be about what is what is the most exquisite or what is the most technically difficult right, or yeah. it's not always about proficiency or all that stuff. It could be fun, dude. It could be fun. So yeah, well, I, it's kind of, it's, it can also be an experience like that. Heilung shit mm-hmm. that, that watching them do that is, is a fucking experience. I, when they come, whenever they do come to Southern California, we got to go Yeah, just to, just to experience it. And yeah, yeah like, like Windrose or whatever, the, the diggy diggy hole song that that's, that song's awesome. They made a like a techno remix to it, and it's oh, it's so good. It's like uh, it's like that Cartman fucking uh, working song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never finished, master guy. Anyway, <laughs> the fucking Dwarven version of yeah, that. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> do you actually know how it goes, or do you have it? Yeah, it's like oh, I am a dwarf and I diggy the hole, <laughs> diggy diggy hole, diggy diggy hole. I'll probably get copyright stricken for that, but you know. What is the what is the equivalent in that in pirate? The what do they call? Oh yeah, there's a pirate. Uh, yeah, there's like a sea shanty. Yeah, it's it's um it's the it's the earthly it's the minor equivalent of a sea shanty basically. Yeah. But uh, I mean, because you know how uh, there's articles written about once you reach thirty or you know the later the later part of your life Mm -hmm. that you end up becoming more closed off to music that you go back to things that you know that you know that is me trying to deprogram my brain and saying that oh this elven or this i mean there are elven oh yeah metal there's lord of the rings there's uh (laughs) lovecraftian theme there's all kinds of crazy ridiculous bands out there that have a sweet gimmick mm-hmm. and they they do well yeah they, they do they they found a niche of something that they enjoy i mean i assume and then they made they wrote songs about it and there's also that niche of people who enjoy that that like their shit because they you know it's decent 
Yeah. So for me, I'm just trying to turn my brain off to just being closed minded about things because ultimately music is to be enjoyed and you can't have any fun if you're not, if you're only sticking to what you know. Yeah, that's true. Cause also the old stuff is eventually going to stop being made. Mm. It's not, it's not going to be around anymore. Mm. You know, sure. I love Metallica, but I mean, I don't know what the status is on them putting out another album. If they're even going to, they might not, but there's going to come a day when they will no longer make new albums. So then if you are only sticking to the old shit, there will come a day that those guys are going to be retired. Cause you know, obviously you were either a kid or whatever. And they were full ass grown adults. <laughs> when you, when you were listening to them, yeah. eventually it's not, they're not gonna make shit anymore. So, True. you know, you just be stuck listening to shit. That's not getting made. So ultimately what can be said about, everything we just talked about is that I think largely it's been a mutually beneficial experience because I mean, yes, there, there were things that you showed me that I wasn't, I, I was willing to take the first bite or have the first taste of it. And yeah, but some things don't hit for me. Right. Sure. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but overall, at least I've been willing to be open-minded because yeah, this can't be, solely on me to keep presenting stuff to you because then that just gets boring like I, I need to be surprised too yeah well that's why i think our dynamic has worked pretty well because we you know introduce each other to shit and you know like whenever we do an episode that is we're gonna oh we're gonna introduce each other to the songs oh i make sure like i, I gotta oh, find I, and i think so this band already had a few songs released and i think they had an ep that they eventually released last year 2023 I, I I don't know how I've managed to avoid showing you this band for the longest time. All right. I think they're cool. Their their whole gimmick is wrestling. How how have you not shown me this? I don't know, but their their name is Jobber, the band. I've never heard of them and but that sounds awesome. Yeah, so they they got like even their posts are themed around fucking wrestling itself. Uh, the band perform. I, I don't. They had some kind of reel that they made about uh, a compilation of some of their live like performances, hits, yeah. right? And the, the lead, the the vocalist, and I believe guitarist as well. Uh, she had like an NWO shirt that she. Oh, that's dope. So, well, anyways, they they have really interesting songs about how wrestling is a, uh, applicable to real life. So, um, when when you are working a nine to five job and you're sitting in your cubicle. That is your fucking hell in a cell. Yeah. So that that I was that's like, that's pretty good. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. We got we got yeah. we got to listen to that at the very end of the. Oh episode. yeah, we are hundred percent. So down. maybe we'll listen to a few songs from Jobber the Band because uh, I mean, if that doesn't get you, if that doesn't get you excited, then <laughs> I, tr- I was trying to do my Tony Horton, but I ended up sounding like Mickey. Yeah, to- but- Tony Horton from uh, P90X. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the German potato soup. Jump, jump. If that ain't P90X, I don't know what is. <laughs> uh, if that ain't all gas, no trash, I don't, I don't know, know what, what is. is. <laughs> you know, dude, we should just start ripping off P90X theme uh, or uh, sayings and turning oh, them into man. like into podcasts. The worst sayings. part, the worst part about that is that we're so far removed from all doing all that that I I can't even remember where the best clips or best audio clips of Tony Horton. Let's have to watch them again and just fucking go from there because he I, has some good gems in that shit, man. Yeah. I mean, that German potato one where he's, that ain't P90X. I don't know what, what is. is. Oh, no. I think she says okra because the one okra, chick says okra. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, okra? Wow. If that ain't P90X, I don't know what is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I do have a few topics in mind. Oh, yeah. Let's get into it. One of them being that Sedona did an interview. I, I, I think. This company or this YouTube channel is owned by Live Nation. Hmm. Curious. Let me double check. Live Nation. Our good friends. <laughs> Our good friends at Live Nation. I'm sure we're on their corporate hit list. Because I, you know they've got they've got somebody. Because I tagged them in all the shit we, we were talking about. So you know they got somebody. They have an intern somewhere there. Ah. Uh-huh. Oh, it's not? Live Nation Entertainment. Live Nation launches an artist discovery platform once to watch. So, so it that's is. it is. Oh, it is. Fucking it bastards. Is. Fucking oh, bastards, man. So that tells me that her manager, who we know. Shit, I forgot the guy's name. 
I don't remember it. Fuck, I don't remember the guy's name. But look, the guy's a big shot. One of yeah. the bands that he's worked with has appeared on the Stephen Colbert show. So he somehow managed to finagle his way, I imagine. And she's no slouch herself. I understand sure, yeah. that she herself is somewhat involved with the music industry, as I came to find out tangentially through a job. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just don't know what in what capacity... So it was either by her own volition or maybe possibly by her manager that she appeared on this thing called the ones to watch. Um, and the interview itself was kind of meh. How long was it? Somewhere around 20. I, I don't know. Maybe some, somewhere between 20 minutes and 30 minutes. You think that's by design? Not, not to get off track, but do you think that when, an artist goes on these type of things. Do you think that that's kind of by design from their management to, Hey, we don't want you to sit there and do a long form hour, 90 minute, two hour episode, because we don't want people telling work, all the, your shit. The work, the works to be, there's, there's work to be done. Um, I don't know about there's work to be done, but maybe they just don't want, maybe they just don't want them to reveal too much or to say something that's a, like opposite of their branding or whatever they're trying to go for. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I think uh, maybe it's something like the WWE where, if you do know the branding of the artist, which you probably should, if you've gotten this far, uh, somebody like Sedona, right? Yeah. That there has to be a fixed amount of questions so that she can present, present the project and get everything out. Yeah. So that you not only get to learn about her music, but also who she is as a person. So I think maybe it would make sense if there was a fixed amount, because anything beyond that becomes a little bit of a drag or if they say something stupid, then. Then you're screwed. It, it, yeah. You just shot yourself in the foot. Well, because you're signing those releases yeah. for them to be there and you don't get to control what happens to the interview. Yeah, so so you, if, might, you might as well be careful. Right. And, and limit the amount of time for there to be any fuck ups, essentially, I yeah. guess. Right. It's possible. I, I think right. I, I, yeah. I think it's possible. Yeah. But uh, so I watched this interview. And I'd say maybe I don't know. I, I, I was just trying to see what I could pull out of it. And what they were talking about amongst themselves, nah, didn't really care. The last third of it was where the interesting bits came about, uh -huh. where Sedona is going to be releasing her debut album this year in 2024, which is cool because it's already been, what, six years since the project has been a thing. Yeah. And then uh, she mentioned, and this is going to turn into its own topic afterwards, about how she herself somebody that's not formally trained in music doesn't know a chord or B chord. Yeah. Uh, or all that stuff, all the technical stuff like tremolos of a brado. I mean, not that I would, I know some terms, but how it all comes together. I, I don't fucking know, but she uh, doesn't have any formal training was taught by her mother. And that was when that kind of bombshell came out that uh, her mother is going to be releasing music as well or attempting to release music. And I think it makes for a really compelling story as an artist when you're already past the prime of, and that's not even a fair, fair statement to make because you can have success at any point in your life. Yeah, right? But it's right. like people already have preconceived ideas about when you can have success in your life. It's usually True. from your 20, 20s to 30s that yeah. you, if you don't make that window then you're considered washed up or whatever so i don't exactly remember what sedona said about her mother if she just ended up getting hit by life you know having a kid or uh, maybe her music wasn't hitting when she was younger as a as a young adult that she ended up just you know packing it up and yeah not revisiting it for a, a certain amount of time well anyways as she revealed, her mother is going to be dabbling in music again under the name Marley Black. So I'm kind of excited about that again to say that. I mean, shit, I'm <laughs> by my own definition, I would call myself a failure because I haven't done certain things by most people's standards to say, like, I own a home or or. um, Yeah have a certain amount in the, in your bank account or whatever, whatever it might be the people's stereotypical definition of what success looks like. Yeah. Uh, I identify with that man. Like, you know, if she's revisiting B 
being an artist in a later stage of her career, then I don't know, man, that hits for me. And it's very much like with Johnny Cash or Rick Rubin, Johnny Cash was somebody that was, uh, I guess considered washed up because he was playing a lot of local joints in Orange County. Yeah. So then Rick Rubin, I don't know how they paired up, but you know, somehow he convinced him to do the hurt cover. Which yeah, yeah. A lot of people know. And I mean, a lot of people have mistaken Johnny Cash for Is being the original, original, but his version was just so compelling that it, that's the one that people end up remembering. They don't remember nine inch nails is probably the one that, Actually, is the, is, it, the original, yeah. is the original, but all that really to say that all it took was somebody to believe in Johnny Cash to have a revival in his career. I'm like, why not? Why not Sedona's mother? And absolutely. So, um, and I remember having this conversation with her mother at the show. She's like, "Oh, I play music," and I, I, I think the last thing I told her was, hey, "If you end up playing a show, like you gotta fucking let me know because." I'm invested now. And then especially with her mentioning that they're going to be releasing or she wants yeah. to release music, then I mean, I, I'm invested, dude. I want to be there when she actually performs. Cause I want to hear, this is somebody that passed on her knowledge to her own daughter. Who's having her own success. So what does that say about her as a, as the par- the parental figure that, I mean, she must know things about music. She might be yeah. talented herself. So yeah, it's worth, uh, it's worth exploring. And forgot what else to add about that well just the main point made bulletin points main bulletin points being that sedona is going to release a debut album this year her mother is also working on music as marley black and then third the revelation that neither of them have formal training in music and that that kind of segues into our next topic because you have made music and you do not have any understanding of formal music theory chords and all that or maybe you do i i actually don't know if uh i actually don't know if whatever software you're using tells you what you're picking yeah yeah okay so or do you just hear things in- yes so you are correct i have no musical knowledge just to even give further of a background the only time I maybe would have learned was when i was in band in like eighth grade and i and i wanted to play the drums but there was 19 people that played the drums. So they told me, hey, we don't have anybody to play the trombone. I'm like, I don't know how to play the trombone. Hey, don't worry. I will teach you how to play the trombone and I'll teach you how to play drums too if you do this. I said, cool. So I basically didn't learn how to read music because I was too dumb. So what they did is he basically just broke it down into the slide of the trombone into 10 positions. And then he just would write the number over the fucking uh, musical note in the thing. But I fucking couldn't tell me i said hey man just let me hear it and i'll and I, I'll, I got it because i could not i couldn't understand the timing of when the notes when you were supposed to play the notes like you know what i'm saying because on on sheet music it, you it's like you have to learn how to you have to know how to read it and i could not quantify in my brain where the timing is where like how you're supposed to do this so i just told him, man let me hear the song once and then let me hear my parts and then I'll, I'll do it. And I, and I was able to replicate it enough to where he's, he's, Oh man. Hey, he was telling me, Oh man, you, me and the other guy who was in the same boat as me, you guys are pretty fucking good. And I was like, man, I don't know how to do any of this shit. I'm just, I just heard it and I'm just, I'm just replicating it. So I'm very much an, I don't know. What is it? Auditory or whatever person where like, like with that, I, I can hear something that I know sounds good. I will put together combinations of things and yeah, there's, uh, so I use some of the Apple loops, the the pre-made loops on some of the things, but then some of them, they don't have exactly what I'm looking for. So I'll hear a loop that's not quite right and I'll replicate it in the thing where they have, they have a, essentially it's this keyboard and it tells you what the notes are. And so I'll just keep hitting the note until I find the one that sounds right. Mm. And then I'll time it, I'll do it. And then you can just record like your own loops, which is kind of what I do. Wait, so you're saying that when you... When you have an idea for a song, you hear the note in your head and you just keep going through basically every key until you hear it. Yeah. Until I hear what I want to hear. And what I'll do is I'll start. I, I'll always start out with the beat or the drum line or I don't know what the fuck it's called, but it's it's that drum part. Yeah. The I'll always start off with that. 
Because once that, because that kind of, for me at least, that sets the tone of the song Mm -hmm. with the timing. And so then I can kind of go and listen to some other, I'll figure out, okay, what do I want? Do I want some string instruments, some violins perhaps? Oh man, I love me some violins on this shit. So I'll toss in some violins. There was a, the the loop, I couldn't, I couldn't find for that one for the without sensor, that video, that, that reel I made for the last episode that we put out. There's a, that, that, tee, tee, that like, uh, it's like a violin screech or whatever. I couldn't find a, a copyright free version of that. So I just made it in, in Apple loops and yeah, it took me like two hours because I, you know, I'm, I, I can't just go, Oh, I know what those notes are. I tried to find out where, what those notes are so I could just replicate it. Mm. Couldn't find it. So I would have to sit there and fucking hit the thing and figure out, okay, what's this note? Okay. No, that's not quite it. Let me keep going. Okay. Wait, this is the one for the first that eat. Eat. like that's what i want okay cool so i just hit it eat, eat, eat. and then it changes like pitch i think once during the thing so then i had to figure out okay what's the what's the next fucking thing gonna be and really what i was trying to do was i wanted to the, the whole song itself i wanted to replicate the psycho sid entrance from wwe because i think that's like the or when he was in the wwe if that's like one of the coolest entrances that that music but I just didn't have time to put it all together. So I just went with a stock background song and then I just made that. Eep, eep, eep. And so, yeah, I just do it by ear. I don't, I don't, I just throw shit together and then I'll start off with, with shit that is pre existing in the loops part. And then I'll say, okay, this sounds all right, but it's, it's not quite right. So then I'll just remake it in the way that I want it exactly mm-hmm. and just keep hitting buttons till I find the right one. Yeah. So yeah, it's difficult. It's, it, it's very time consuming. Yeah. It would probably be much easier if I did know how to actually compose music, but because I don't, it's, it, I'm probably the least efficient. Like if you were to compare me to, I don't know, somebody who actually knows what the fuck they're doing mm-hmm. from start to finish on creating a song, I don't know. And maybe I am more efficient because technically I put out albums in fucking, you know, it's true. I mean, seven days or whatever. uh, (laughs) Better than most artists because they sit on shit too long and they, um, and not to say, yeah, it's hard because I I get it, dude. They, there's quality assurance, right? Yeah. You you want, you want to want to be perfect. You want to get every minutia right of the song itself. Sometimes dude, a plan executed poorly, poorly is better, better than one that than the perfect is, plan that never gets executed. Yeah. So nothing's, I don't think you'll ever be satisfied with anything yeah, no. you, you make. Cause I mean, even when we do the podcast or even when we do, uh, and not, not exclusively this one, but just all of the ones we do in general. Yeah. I always in the back of my mind, I'm like, ah, man, I knew I fucked up somewhere. And I, I just know that for the future, I, I got to clean that shit up. But we never we never largely delete anything we do with it. It no. goes up. It goes up because mm-hmm. it, it, ha- it that's how you know you're improving. Like you make progress, right? Yeah, it's it's slow, incremental progress. And that's how, you know, at least you're doing better, I guess. So and this subject, I think, is kind of interesting because. It's it's for in, for for musicians or for artists that don't have formal training. I wonder how much longer it takes to, you know, for two artists to create the exact same song. For one that is super fish, proficient in music, and uh, the other one that is um, doesn't have any formal training. I mean, basically, what you're describing is that you're just going through everything until you find what you're looking for. Yeah. Whereas the other person. Maybe they already know all the arrangements of the chords of how to make the song, but what do they, what could they possibly lack out of being so formally trained as creativity? Right. And like that's kind of like a interesting dynamic between people that don't have formal training is that they might end up taking fucking forever because they don't know. And maybe, maybe they have their own way of arranging music, but it might end up taking them, making them take longer, but at least they're being fucking original, which is the whole point of music itself. But for other people that are formally trained, maybe being so formally trained makes it inhibits what you. Yeah. Yeah. So Well, it's like you're put in a box. It, it's all. Oh, what is it? It's it's that thing where you're 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 training or whatever is 
has become your prison. Mm -hmm. And now you can't think outside of that little box or square that you've put yourself in with, okay, I know how this is supposed to be. Well, I have no preconceived notions of how things are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So potentially the, I could make something that's totally different than what could be possible from someone who's classically trained Mm -hmm. because they don't, they would never think to do some of the maybe stupid shit that I do because they would think, Oh no, that's not how you do it. It's got to be done this way. It's kind of like math, right? That's people that are usually really talented at music are good with math or the ones that understand music and musical theory. Cause it's all number. It's, it's, it's all like a mathematical equation, right? Essentially writing music. I've heard people say that, that it's kind of like math. And so I'm terrible at fucking math. So I can't sit there and learn how to do it. And yeah, I would be curious to know, you know, that'd be a good, uh, like a reality show to have, five artists that are trained and five artists who are not and put them together on a thing and then makes the better song or yeah like put them put them against each other in like a game show format right Mm -hmm. and you have little challenges and stuff that they got to do and then at the end of each week or whatever each artist has to have come up with a new song or something let's say that they've put together and see who has the best shit and who gets eliminated and see who would win i have a feeling it i think the people that don't know any better would win out. Yeah, I do easily. too. I think they would easily because they're they're not going to be told what's wrong. And everybody that has, ha- I, I might be repeating myself, but I feel like those people that are so critical of themselves because it doesn't sound something doesn't sound right. Yeah, or it like you're programmed. Right. Yeah. Your your programming is telling you uh, this chord doesn't fit with everything else. The the entire arrangement of the song. So, and then you just end up starting from scratch. You just keep doing that over and over again. And yeah. then when it comes to people tangentially tangentially related, when people do things that are remarkable, I mean, dude, Jimi Hendrix was not somebody that was formally trained. Yeah, true. He played left-handed. He did, he did weird shit with the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Eric Clapton was another one of those people. Jimmy Page was another self-taught yeah. person. Uh, I think Eddie Van Halen was also another person that just did things that people could not fucking comprehend because all they knew was textbook or what somebody else taught them. And I mean, I mean, some people argue that Eddie or uh, Van Halen's debut album is one of the greatest things ever because of the shit that all the guitar business that went on in that, uh, that album, but it's because he didn't know any better. He didn't right. fucking know any better. Yeah. So I feel like if there was a contest, or something like that. Shit, man, that'd be that'd be fucking awesome to see. I really do think like every single time the people that don't know any better would would win out. Yeah. <clears throat> I think so cuz they're not constrained in any way. <clears throat> they don't have preconceived notions of what music should be, so they're not going to be stuck in a box. And then honestly, they probably take criticism better too because Cause you're going to have judges, right? And they're going to fucking say, Oh, this was terrible. So yeah, if it was me, I'd be like, eh, whatever. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, where if, as if it's someone who's classically trained and expected to produce a good product. Oh my God. What I did, I did the formula just right. And I didn't, it, it was terrible. Uh, you know? So I don't know. That'd be interesting at least to, to see. Yeah. If anybody out there is listening and does that, I want a fucking credit. I, we, we want a credit for this shit. If you make that show. Yeah. Shit, man, that'd be better than uh, the karaoke competitions that are American Idol and The Voice. I mean, yeah, at least maybe original music can be created out of this as opposed to just singing the same top 40 songs for. I don't know. Does that even exist? Is there even a reality show that does that? There they was make one new new music. There was one, I think, on NBC, but it ended up going away. I think Why? That, I think they're I, I think they probably saturated themselves with too many karaoke contests or like the voice and the American idol that it's like, Oh, what's one more. And then once people saw it, they're like, what the fuck do I care about this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, shit, well, oh, um, I, I don't know if you have anything else to add besides you, anything else to add music for, music for, for this, for yeah, this topic. Yeah. Music is hard. Yeah. But it ain't that hard. All right. If an idiot like me can have two, fucking albums to his name Mm. full length albums okay not just bullshit fucking a song or two full length albums and has another one on the way and is going to put out a total of six this fucking year in 2024 
It's not that fucking difficult. Just fucking get off your ass and do it. That's all I'm saying. All right, fair enough. Um, I did read a news article since I wanted to touch up lightly on Coachella itself. Oh, yeah, okay. So there was articles being written about how the ticket sales were slow uh, once they actually were available to purchase. And it seems as though now they started to sell out the first weekend. But as we came to find out for the lineup itself, no doubt was the surprise guest yeah. of Coachella. And for me, what it, what that really says about no doubt is they weren't, or they're not, they're, they're, currency their currency is being a band is not that strong because if if uh if they were to sell out coachella in a matter of fucking minutes then maybe you could say no doubt had a partial is partially responsible for the tickets being yeah sold but because it took so long what does that say about fucking no doubt itself i mean that says a lot to me especially with the fact at least here in southern california at least on the major radio stations, they play fucking no doubt all the time. Mm. Don't speak the fucking bathwater song. I fucking hear that. And now granted, I try not to listen to the radio that often because it is just as you, as you say, pedestrian and mid bullshit that they're playing. I try not to listen to it, but sometimes when I'm in the car, I, I, my, my phone doesn't connect. And so if, what I just say, fuck it. And I just want to hear what's on the radio for a minute. And I'm just like, okay, nope, can't do it. Got to go back to the phone. Let me plug the shit in. But I will hear that song. Every time I'm on uh, the radio comes on, there's there's some no doubt song playing. So people know about it. It's shoved down their throat. And it may be not to relate everything back to wrestling, but it may be that whole thing where people get sick of someone being around so much that they just don't care anymore. And yeah, no doubt hasn't been in existence in what? 20 years, probably ish. Dude, I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, let's give him 15 just to we'll be safe. Yeah, maybe a decade. We'll just say a decade. The decade. Say but th- that's still a long, considerable amount of time that they haven't been around. Yeah. And sure, you've got the voice of, of no doubt, Gwen Stefani still making music, but it isn't no doubt. So it seems as though the time has passed for them to be going into the limelight again. I don't think that they have the value that kind of how you said they don't, their stock is, is, is quite low right now. Yeah, dude. Cause well, yeah, keep going. And I think that they're the fact that they couldn't sell it out right away tell or, or it, it was slow. Even after they announced that no doubt was going to be coming back for this one special time or whatever, I see where they were going and, and it's very prevalent right now that all these nostalgia acts are coming back and doing and selling out shows. And right. That's kind of a big thing. But if you bring them back in the, I would say this is getting to be the apex of this type of shit of the nostalgia acts coming back. You're in the heat of it right now. And if you can't, if you can't sell move tickets, well then that probably says you're you're probably not coming back. You're not coming back and doing your own solo. No doubt tour. I don't think you're cooked, man. It's they might. I, I feel like they might, if this goes well, they might latch on to another band that's hot right now and say, hey, let's go on tour together. But then really the draw is the other band and they're just kind of riding the coattails. Or of that, you, perhaps it's a safe bet that if you put both of these bands as co-headline for a tour, you know, it's going to sell. It's it's a safety blanket because the other band will, will, will move carry. the numbers. Yeah. yeah, they'll carry it. Yeah. But that's just not very encouraging for no doubt itself as a band to say that mostly that their time is over, that their draw as a band, it's not there anymore. Uh, if they if they were, in fact, I mean, there's been a number of bands that could have done just as easily that could have sold out the tickets. If Daft Punk reunited, I think yeah. people would go eight shit and oh, those yeah. tickets would go out. And they'd probably so, they'd probably be like a thousand dollars a piece. Yeah, who who the fuck knows what the number would be? But it didn't happen with no doubt. So that that is very a very curious uh, thing. And it, I, I think you brought it up on a previous episode. This is the time to capitalize on this demographic, our yeah, our age group, because we're the people that allegedly have money. Yeah. spend. Yeah. So well, why why not get the why not get the money for the bands? Why not get the bands? To give up the millennial money. Yeah, it's they 
we didn't get to see them because we didn't have parents or money that would take us to go. Now, granted, we maybe don't necessarily have the money, but the millennials are the ones who spend money they don't have. So whether we have the money or not, we're going to go and sacrifice something of our own to go live out that childhood fantasy that we never got. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, our, our parents' generation, I don't think had that issue because anything they wanted to go see, they just went and go saw it. It was, it was $3 or whatever, you know, shit was cheap back then comparatively, you know, I mean, not, not to go off topic, but I mean, I just, I read a thing that if you made $80,000 a year back in the eighties, that's now the equivalent. You'd have to make a quarter of a million dollars a year to live the lifestyle you lived making 80 grand in, in, in the eighties. Yeah. So by all standards, if you make a hundred grand a year, which you think is a lot of money, you're basically in poverty rations, <laughs> you know, well, for San Francisco, no doubt. Oh, if you make under, I think 160, I think that's where you can get welfare in San Francisco. So, but in most other parts of at least California or Southern California, yeah, you might be thinking you're doing all right, making a hundred grand a year, but really you're, you're not, you're making probably basically either median income or, or just below. I think 120 grand is actually maybe median income now. So, we as millennials, we're yeah, we're making 120 grand a year or maybe the median, but we don't have a thousand dollars to go spend on fucking concert tickets, but we're gonna spend it because that's just what we do. We'll sacrifice something else. Ah, my electric bill won't get paid this month, or <laughs> you know, fuck whatever. That we're the generation that does that. And so now I think that, like I said, like I had said before, that they are realizing that they can capitalize on us. And so why not? For certain bands, but sure. I don't I don't think they ever expected. I don't think Golden Voice ever expected. For no doubt to not be what it was. I think no doubt might be the first one that isn't hitting. That's not, there's push, I, I maybe pushback's not the right word, but there's no draw for it. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what they do after this, if they do try to go on tour or do something after this. Yeah. And I, I think it might just be a symptom in general that festivals, I mean, dude, there was, there was a festival in, um, in Australia called Moo. Something, something with a cow, <laughs> like it had M O O, yeah, as part of the word as like a pun or something, and that festival ended up getting canceled because there wasn't enough tickets that were being moved. But there's also been festivals in the UK, larger ones, yeah, they're not, they're not going, they're not selling well. So maybe it's just at large. Maybe a contributing factor also is that people don't have the income to also go, and they're also choosing. Not to go because maybe the lineup isn't as good as people believe it to be. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just interesting. Um, it is very interesting. I guess the last thing to talk about real quickly is. Uh, well, man, that was it was kind of the root of the. The the anchor fucking topic for this particular episode, but uh, I guess it might be related to no doubt because no doubt started off as like a. Uh, I guess what would be considered a third wave ska band ska being the first wave of ska being starting in, in, in Jamaica. Right. And yeah. The second wave starting in the UK and then the third starting here in Southern California. Right. right. Or in, also in, in Boston, I suppose, uh, or, or the East coast as well. You just call it the U S in general. Uh, and I guess, I guess I'll fucking pick ska as the, uh, <laughs> as the the genre to pick on because that genre had its best days in the 80s and 90s right i mean nickelodeon cartoons had ska songs oh, yeah. i mean there was kablam the cartoon that was like a it was a comic book but the the intro of the song itself was like a ska song uh a lot of movies clueless had the mighty mighty oh, yeah. boston mighty mighty bostons um i'm trying to think of other movies that had Ska, but that all capitulated at the end of the fucking nineties, and it has not reached its popularity once more. Even no doubt for a band that started off with that. I mean, they moved on to dub and reggae, which are like adjacent subgenres of like calypso and I forgot what else, but yeah. they too evolved from that genre because I think if they stuck with that, they knew they were gonna get left behind. But my question or the topic to to bring up is that do genres end up dying or can they be revived? Because I can I can I think there's could be arguments that could be made from 
both. And Scott is one of the ones that has probably largely dissipated in yeah. mainstream culture. But yeah, and and I think that that they general. I would say the subgenres. Obviously, you've got like your rock, your pop, your metal. Those things aren't gonna fucking go anywhere. Those aren't gonna dissipate or go away at least anytime soon. They've been around for however long. But you got, yeah, like Ska is a good example of that where it's kind of just, it disappeared and then no one's picked it back up again to be bringing it to the forefront or mainstream popularity. And yeah, there isn't a band that is the, the flag bearer for the genre. Right. Yeah. Well, actually. Okay. There might be one, but they're not They're. uh, I don't know how big their popularity is, but there's this band called the Interrupters, and they're of that vein. But they're not on television and shit. And, yeah. And, and like the way the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones are some yeah, of the yeah. other bands from the 90s were. But anyways, you were. Yeah, no, I, I think that it's very possible to revive that type of music if anybody gives a shit. And maybe it just could be because no one's really fucking done it to revive it. I, I think that you got these peaks and valleys with popularity in certain Mm. genres. Right. And so if you go, I mean, we're kind of seeing it now that eighties kind of synth type music. I feel like that's kind of starting to kind of come back a little bit. I've heard a couple of shit, a couple of things. I don't know if it's actually going to become mainstream again. The weekend. Yeah. But uh, they're you, they're starting to use it in things, right. Or, kind of be inspired by it or something to that effect. Yeah. Whereas that, like all that shit has really not been prevalent since the eighties. And now here it's going on 30 years, 40 years later, it's starting to kind of maybe come back again. And I think when you have that gap of generation, that's what'll like our parents listen to that stuff. Right. You know, like I was saying before about my dad listening to Madonna, right that type of music could come back now because me as a kid, I heard that stuff and yeah, whether I liked it at the time or not, it still brings back that nostalgia button or whatever. So then if you tried to do a new era version of that, yeah, I would probably listen to it because it would hit those little nostalgia buttons and dopamine in my brain and, and fucking give me feelings of nostalgia and Mm -hmm. I would probably enjoy it. So I think if you, and then maybe if it got to the point where you could get the kids that hadn't, been exposed to that mm. to hear it that's how it would catch on right the zoomers would catch on to it and say oh man this stuff's cool and then maybe they'd go back and listen to 80s style fucking music mm. pop pop music and they would be oh man this stuff is great and then that could that's how you that's how you get a revival of a of a genre essentially so i think it's very possible but at the same time if no one's doing it because no one cares about it dies it'll never happen it'll just die and the same thing could be said with ska is if there's just one band doing it that's kind of somewhat popular it's never going to make a full comeback because no one's doing it if there was two three four five six seven bands doing it hey i'd say there's a real good chance that that might come back into the forefront potentially i wonder if location plays a part in it too that if something only is localized to one country could it become a global sensation I mean, because that's kind of like how Scott started. It started in Jamaica, then it, yeah, and then eventually people from Jamaica went to the UK or whatever, and they showed their records to people that lived within the country, and then it came to us because we heard it on MTV or yeah or some shit like that. So it does happen that way, but I mean, if it's not that popular, I mean, if it's just in one spot, can it fucking blow up? Well, yeah, I think now for sure. Back then, it was probably a lot harder because you didn't have the advent of the internet, the the advantage that the internet is say what you want, but I mean, okay. Like millennial frog, right? Global artist has had artists has had downloads in foreign countries. Yeah. So now if I was here just making that music and going to clubs and playing it or going to small house shows and playing it, right. It would probably never be heard in whatever countries have heard it. Zero chance. Absolutely none. But the fact that the internet exists, that really is a catalyst that can push those things into a global phenomena. Or maybe it's not even global. Maybe it's just a certain country likes it. And that's where you go in. The, the David Hasselhoff thing. Hasselhoff. 
fucking huge in in fucking Germany. Germany. I mean, a mega mega pop star. It didn't make it here as a pop star. He was an actor, right? But for some reason, those Germans love that fucking David Hasselhoff music. And shit, he's like a legend there. Mm. So yeah, it very well could possibly be possible that someone could go and get a following in. It's like with us and the Belgians. Yeah, I'd like I'd love to fucking try and get some more Belgian people. God, if we could become the David Hasselhoffs of Belgium, <laughs> oh fuck, I'm in. Because <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> it doesn't matter where you go big, yeah. as long as you do it, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, I think there's definitely an argument to be made that it could be done. Mm-hmm. Especially now. Now is the time to do it more than ever more than ever, because we're here in the internet age. So Yeah, I think for certain genres, certain subgenres, I mean, because for Dual Lipa, right? The yeah. anchor point of her music is pop, right? Mm-hmm. Pop is a genre. It wasn't before. It was just popular music. Yeah. But then pop became its own fucking genre. But the things that are attached to her music are like disco and funk. Disco by disco by itself, I don't think can can make it. Right. So you need pop to be the anchoring point, and then you spice it up with some of these other subgenres that haven't yeah been around for been a around while. for a minute. So then those are supplemental. Those are like the extra flavors of the sprinkles. Those yeah. are the fucking Twix candy bars you throw in in the mix. Yeah. And then by default, you're also creating something somewhat original and it's wholly different than what is out there. And that's also, I think, uh, a draw for people is hearing something that's not the same old shit, hearing something that's different mm. or innovative, even though you're again, you didn't invent disco, you didn't invent pop, you didn't invent ska. Mm. But if you took them and combined aspects of them in a way that's never been done before, well, now you've created something original that, you know, is different. Mm. And people people like that. People like to hear different shit. Yeah, I mean, dude, one thing for sure. And I, I don't think they created it, but they have hybridized it so well that you could call them one of the... Uh, f- the front runners of the genre. Oh, I don't even know what the fuck to call it, but horror, the band, not horror, but horror. <laughs> these two, these two dudes that mixed rap with fucking industrial music and punk music. Oh, that's cool. Such a weird sound, but I'm like, this fucking works. Like these three things work together because it kind of reminds me of this old punk band called Bad Brains, but it also kind of reminds me of like KFMDM. Uh, back like in uh, well shit I remember it being on the Mortal Kombat soundtrack but then you throw rap on top of it oh man like that in and of itself is super fucking interesting and I know that somewhat existed with the 90s with like new metal I think with like corn corn kind of you know Linkin Park kind of did that but yeah their incarnation of doing it is is original yeah so I think I think also like on the alternative side, um, I'm trying to think of a group that has suffered because of the fact that they, they belong to a genre that's kind of like dead. Okay. Psycho Billy music. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Psycho Billy music is such a fucking niche thing that, I mean, I've heard from a friend that follows it, that there haven't been new bands to fucking, there aren't a whole lot of new bands in Psychobilly uh, because maybe the interest is not there. And also it's not really profitable if there's not really an audience for people to listen. But also yeah. it's just kind of a, a niche thing. It's it's weird horror themed country rock and roll country music yeah. like somewhere in between. But with the theme of Psychobilly, like that doesn't resonate with a lot probably of, 90 yeah. percent of the people. So the potential for it dying is a lot higher now because the audience is not there for it anymore. And well, and that's the other thing too, is if you, if there's not an audience for it, then that's a lower pool of people to pull from, to be inspired to then make that kind of music. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's almost that chicken and egg argument or whatever. Yeah. If there's no, if there's no egg to hatch from, then there can't be a chicken or whatever. Right. So I think that that can also contribute. That's the negative contribution to not, being kind of popular now is because if you're not inspired to do it, because again, I mean, we kind of talked about this on another podcast, but you know, if you're going to sit down and become a band, right. And you sit there and say, all right, let's figure out what the most money we can make, what genre of music we could do. 
that's going to make us the most money. Sure, you could do it, but it's probably not going to be that good. Now, if you were to sit there and say, okay, listen, we really fucking are. We, we love psychobilly music. We want to make psychobilly music. Not probably a whole lot of money in that. Okay, cool. Let's make our psychobilly music. And man, it's going to probably come out and be fucking fire. It's probably going to be a great by psychobilly standards, right? Yeah. So then, then that comes in the innovation part. Okay, how do we make this more accessible to mainstream? How do we, how do we do that? Okay, sure, maybe it'll suffer a little bit in quality or not quality, but in in what would be considered good standard by psychobilly standards or psychobilly fan standards because you're kind of selling out and you're adding in maybe disco or you're adding in some pop or something. Or maybe you make it sound more like Elvis. Yeah, and whatever that whatever that metric is that you're going to try to do. Okay, cool. Maybe that's melding of both of those worlds in the correct way that'll help you be different and potentially be successful. Yeah. So, uh, well, one thing I, I for sure don't see surviving and I hope it doesn't, I hope we go back to what rap was. It's just people having their own distinct flow. Cause like 50 yeah. cent doesn't sound like Snoop Dogg, right? Right. Yeah. Trap music needs to go away. I think it needs to die. I mean, it's, it's taking up, you know, rap itself. Yeah. And I, I couldn't even tell you like all the artists that encompass trap music, who the, who the anchors of the genre are, but man, this, that feels like something that is definitely, it's going to be a time capsule for this period. Like for these last, who, who the fuck knows, like 20 years, yeah. How, however long this music has existed, what comes afterward? Trap is not going to exist. There's going to be some other incarnation of rap itself. Maybe we go back to the basic roots of music or that genre itself. Whereas trap, maybe it goes to the fucking wayside and all every everything with it. Every yeah, every fucking artist that was with it. Yeah, I think you might be right because rap. Listen, trap music. Some of it's pretty good, but the the trap. There's a lot of shit going on with trap music. There's a lot of there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of weird beats. There's a lot of different kind of instruments playing at the same time and rap what it was was just a basic beat and dudes rapping over it that's it i think if you maybe went back to that like uh what's his name that guy we we listened to on the one episode before joey valence and bray the yeah guys that sound like the beastie boys right yeah like something like that is probably gonna start to do well yeah i mean getting back to basics i guess the, the triple beats, man, the with the fucking the fucking uh, and I, I know I'm dating myself by saying <laughs> this, but the the auto tune, man, everybody sounds the same. I'm sorry. I tried. Yeah. Listen, I tried listening to it. It doesn't doesn't hit with me, but I guess it's not for me. It's not for me, dude. I'm, I'm, I'll wait for whatever comes afterwards. I'll, I'll wait for whatever comes afterwards. Um, So I guess now we can fucking uh, listen to some jobber. Oh, uh-huh, yeah, let's do it. I'm fucking down. I think we're going to have to pause the episode because I, yeah. I need to find what song. All right. All right, here, we'll pause it and then we'll come right back. All right. All right, we're back for just a quick second. I just want to test this to make sure it's not going to play the audio so we can listen to it. Oh, no, we're not going to listen to it live, so never mind. All right, disregard. We'll be right back. All right, so we're going we're gonna to listen to two songs. We're going to listen to the first one's going to be Hell in a Cell, mm. and then the second one's going to be Entrance Theme, right? So, how'd you find these guys? Fucking just perusing the interwebs. Mm, all right, all right. And plus, they were called jobbers, so I'm like, <laughs> I know what that term means. So <laughs> that immediately hooked me in. Yeah. All right, all right. So this will be. So yeah, you know, you know how this works. Go find your fucking local iTunes or or, or YouTube or whatever. And uh, when we pause it, you can just pause the podcast and then go listen to it, and then come right back, and then we'll. We'll listen to it. So this first song is going to be Hell in a Cell by Jobber. All right. That was Hell in a Cell by Jobber. Man, that was pretty fucking good. I, I Lyrically, yeah, that was that was cool. Uh, some of the wordplay that they used there was, was quite excellent. Yeah. Uh, I think they take after um, a lot of the grungy, like 90s stuff, female fronted bands. Um, yeah. The... The last portion of the song where it says, because uh, there, there's like a thing about going over as a as a wrestler to say that you're yeah. the next in line. And right. it's very much like work where 
you know, you think you did all the work to warrant that you uh, deserve to move up or get, get you're the next in line and that doesn't work out. And it's like, oh, why? Why can't yeah. I go over? Yeah. Why would why, you put me over? Why, why are you putting why, this other guy over? Yeah. And then saying that. What was it? Um, shit. I open up the- oh, that one. That one part. Am, shit, I, shit. Am, am I buried forever? If I start speaking my mind, you know, mm-hmm. if I start saying how I really feel, oh, I'm just going to get buried. They're just going to fucking push me to the bottom. Yeah. Or, or even fire me. <laughs> or even calling like hell week, like the work, the work week that, you know, it's going to be a fucking pain and you, you can get through it or whatever. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, I don't know. It's just like a, it's just a fun song that has wrestling themes and, the part about falling 20 feet, like nothing's yeah. going to prepare you for that. It's like nothing. Shit, man. At any point you can get the sack like for, for your job and you can perform well, but yeah, they hey, can still tell you to fuck off. They'll tell you, you off, the, throw you off the top of a 20 foot tall hell in a cell cage. So for me, conceptually, it's just an interesting idea to, I, I don't know if I know a lot of songs that try to incorporate wrestling into uh music or even like the lingual of what wrestling itself into a song, but for me, like they get bonus points for that, and uh, at least at least it's fucking something original that I haven't I haven't particularly seen. Yeah, so true. Yeah, I agree. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, all right. So what was what was the next one? Uh, uh, entrance theme. Entrance theme. All right. So this will be entrance theme by Jobber. All right, that was entrance theme by Jobber. That was pretty good too. But I think as an entrance theme, it's missing something. It's missing an audience participation part or some part for the audience to sing along like some not even that, but it's something that because, you know, I mean, fuck, we could probably do a whole episode about wrestling and music, right? And entrance themes. And one of the thing that is makes such a great theme is there's a portion of the song, whether it be lyrics or whether it be part of the tune that the audience fucking goes in and starts doing. Okay, obviously with the Cody Rhodes, it's that, whoa, everybody fucking does that, right? And I don't know if that was intentional or not, but Seth Rollins, whoa, everybody sings the tune to the song. Same thing with Shinsuke Nakamura. All the great entrance musics nowadays all have some sort of fucking, some sort of part that the audience can go with. That song didn't really have anything that the audience could hum a tune to, or say one of the lines to that's what it that's what it needs it needs that and then that song is a fucking 10 out of 10 yeah uh that song is more i i just enjoy the instrument parts more yeah. than the lyrics because i don't know what the fuck the lyrics are about the other song the hell the hell in a cell that one i think is okay on the instrument parts or the music itself and then the lyrics is where where it shines where is the, where it shines but just just an interesting group from new york and i think they're kind of cool and that'd be worth sharing on this program so notice that we don't fucking largely avoid top 40 type of shit because uh i mean fuck man well you can hear that anywhere you, you hear that yeah. anywhere else that's not that's not what this is so it's not what we're about yeah so we like giving the the limelight to the little guys yeah the people that are on the rise are just people that deserve their due. So yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Anyways, that, that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you give your balls a tug and um, <laughs> yeah, give your balls a tug. Yeah, give your balls a tug. And uh, while you're tugging your balls, use the other hand to go to Instagram and or fu- well to go to Instagram and follow at Game Rage Magazine at All Gas No Trash Official No Spaces No Underscores No Dashes No No Tomfoolery or Fuckery Afoot It's just the name straight across And if you wanted to follow us on What's the other one TikTok That's at Game Rage Magazine And if you wanted to follow us on X That's at Game Rage Mag And also go to our website GameRageMagazine.com And uh, you know Check out all other shit there So Anyways that was a cheap plug for the end of the episode See Didn't make you sit through Didn't make you have to sit through the advertisement at the beginning You could turn it off at the end Because it's over The second I started talking about it the, the service that we provide Is just fucking unparalleled In my opinion So Anyways Alright well That'll do it So thanks for listening And we will catch you on The Next one
that was the Game Rage Music Show. Thanks for listening.